Let's talk about a few important consequences of this theorem. First one's very simple. Notice that if we say A had an order N, then the subgroup generated by A had, in fact, N elements. We have the E and then A to the first up to A to the N minus one. So that means that the order of element A has to equal the same thing as the order of the subgroup generated by A. Fairly minor, but that actually sort of justifies the reason why we use the absolute value for both of those types of order. Now, I didn't prove this last bit, but it's actually a really important thing. Let's suppose that A is of order N, and A to the K is equal to the identity. trying to pull this thing exactly, we're saying that a to the 0 equals a to the k. So by our theorem, what that says, a to the i equals a to the j, in this case a to the 0 equals a to the k, that must mean that n divides k minus 0, which is k. So, any time you've got an element, if you raise it to a power to get e, that power is a multiple of the order of the element. One last little consequence. Let's take a look at two different elements of a group. Let's say I've got A, which is, let's just say I've got A and B. And let's say further, we don't have to have an abelian group. The whole group doesn't have to commute. But let's say that AB and BRA are the same. Then, what I'm going to say, as a result of that same theorem, is that the order of A to B must divide the order of A times the order of B. Well, let's think about that. So, let's say the order of A is equal to N and the order of B is equal to M. Well, then certainly A, B to the M, N, because A and B commute, A, B equals B, A, we can kind of break that whole thing up and say this thing is going to end up being A to the M, N, B to the M, N. But then that's equal to a to the n raised to the m times b to the m raised to the n. That's e to the m times e to the n because the order of b is m, the order of a is n. So that's equal to e. So since a b to the m n equals e, by this thing we said before, that must mean that the order of AB must divide that power that we raised it to, MN. But 
that's just exactly what we wanted to prove. The order of AB is order of AB. M was the order of B. N was the order of A. So there we go. The order of AB has to equal, or sorry, must divide the order of A times the order of B.